license to thrill. Mm. Because it's about licensees and it's thrilling. There we go. This section is about, we, we talked about this in detail over the last few months and thought, okay, we, we, well, we're going to do something different. And, and I thought, well, seeing as Jez was nicking off, let's let's take away the beyond the newest acquisitions and do something a bit, bit different. And we always always been interested in licensees because as we went through the beyond the toys bits and bobs, we saw that there was lots of connections between licensees. They do all sorts of stuff. We thought, hey, why don't we just focus on licensee each month? Because there are thousands of licensees. So it will keep us going for a long time, whereas beyond the newest acquisitions might sort of end when we when I kind of got through all the ships and all the, the play sets and stuff. So this, this, this will keep me busy. It's keep me busy for a while. Let's come up with the first one. And uh, I just picked it off the top of my head, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm going to be honest about it. And we picked Clark's shoes. And you know what? It never occurred to me that this didn't happen in the UK. Let's have a quick chat about Clark's shoes. Now, everyone here will know all about Clark's shoes, because I'm sure you were taken into Clark's shoe shops when you were kids. Um, I didn't realise that they'd been going for such a long time. They were actually founded as C&J Clark International Limited in 1825 by brothers cyrus and james clark in somerset which is a very nice little place Uh, and they're still going and they have over a thousand stores and franchises across the globe so they really do i mean they are such a a leading brand in shoes when i was a kid it was probably the only shoe shop used to go to because you know clark's were the shoes and especially for school shoes they used to last they used to last at least a year um, so they were never, well, you could play football in them, you could do all sorts. Then back to summer, you, your mum would go, right, school time's coming up, you go back to the shoe shops. Now, Rich, you probably didn't have shoe shops in, in up north, so I'll probably leave you out of this. But guys, what were your memories of going to a shoe shop? Because I remember that metal shoe brace they used to put on your foot. It's called the Brannock. Anyone have any memories of going to a shop with that device on your foot? Jason, you're, you're ancient. Yes, I, I remember that. I remember that from... I'm, I'm from the very north of Scotland, a place called Thurzo. I'm pretty sure they had them in there. And I'd visit family down in the Nottingham area a couple of times a year. And, yeah, all the shops we went... Cheese shops we went in there had Brannocks. I, I had particularly... I do have still particularly wide feet. And I still buy my shoes in Clark's quite often because they, they, they do wider fitting shoes as well. So. Oh, bless, bless your little feet. Well, you're two boys. Well, now, Stu, you, you, you're quite young, so you're probably like, you know, uh, into more trendier brands. Well, no, no, no. I used to have Clarks, and um, my children have had Clarks when they were young. There's decent shoes. I wouldn't put them in cheap crap because it's not good for them. But um, <laughs> and they're a little bit righteous. When I was there, when I used to go to Clarks. It used to be the, like the big mechanical machine, which I know you're going to get onto in a minute. But I think they're back using more like a Brannock type thing now. That machine was a highlight. I mean, when, 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 when I, t- I can't remember what year it was, but I was I was shocked to find it. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it, from from what I could find, it was called the Dana device. Was it? Um, See, that was already in Clark's when I was down here. Anyway, I'm, I'm subbing it. Obviously, they've probably just got that machine up in Newcastle. Hey, did, did did you have a thrill of having that machine go around your little footsie, or were you too trendy down south to uh, to be seen in a Clark shoe shop? I must admit, so yeah, I remember those de- those machines, those devices, they had them in quite a few different uh, shoe shops. I was never a big fan of Clarks myself. Um, I, I am, Knew it. I am slightly younger than some of you guys, so um, <laughs> the, the, Clark, the Clarks I remember the, were the ones with the uh, kind of fluorescent lightning strike on the side. Um, I don't know if you remember those ones. They were they were very big in the late 80s, and lots of my friends had them, but um, I, never, I never really liked them myself. Late 80s? Late 80s? Some of us were leaving school in the late 80s. Crikey, you I are know. young. But, that, but uh, I, can anyone describe that electronic device? Rich, did you, did you honestly ever even get an electronic device up there? Or they were just like, no, we put bags on his feet and strap him up and let him walk to school that way? Well, oh, right, with clocks anyway, we were never allowed in clocks. It was too expensive. So we never, ever, ever got anything in clocks. Um, I remember certainly because I had funny shaped feet, and I think one of my feet, one foot was like a full size bigger than the other foot, which caused me more than non-stop problems. I also remember two specific incidents. Uh, I had a pair of shoes, and the soles fell out. So I always remember my dad, my dad super glued them together, but the glue just got everywhere. And I had a pair of trainers, and because I wore them so much, the sole fell off my trainers. So I had to sellotape 
right around the top of my foot where the laces will go. I had to sellotape all around there, right to the front of my toes, and then bring the sellotape back round the tie to <laughs> sellotape the heel back in. Uh, and I used to go out playing football with sellotape trainers, and <laughs> needless to say, I got the mick taken out of us like constantly. Oh, to, to there. I had to. With regard to the machine, I do remember my sister in the machine because I always remember thinking, "Go on, crusher." Um, you know when. That's the, hard. Well, me and my sister I'd still to this day don't get on very well, and uh, I always remember thinking, if she fell in that machine, would it would it squash her and stuff like that? But yeah, I'd, we did have the machine back then, but we did we didn't go to clocks. You see, that, that's what I feared. I thought, oh, there's a little guy operating it, and I just thought, I wonder if that happened. That's why they just got rid of him because I was thought, if he just presses the wrong button, he's gonna crush my foot because they were big. To I mean, if anyone doesn't know what they are, it's just you put your foot in a hole. And then these these metal kind of like blocks come and you know come from the left, the right, the top, and the bottom, and you know just come and touch the size of your feet and give you a measurement. I think if he just yeah you know, could they could they crush my foot? It was like a bit a bit of a risky thing, but I did love that machine. I, I mean that to me was shoe shops. But like I said I mean the last time I went to get shoes fitted with well, my feet all over the place, like they just had a a random little you know Brannock kind of device which just measured your foot so maybe maybe, maybe they were maybe just killing kids i don't know right that, that donna device looks like a, it looks like a foot spa and I, I certainly can never remember seeing one of those anywhere well you are ancient though to be fair you're older than me i i, I am i'm so, as uh, old as old as the moon you were probably doing what we all do now you didn't really need to get your feet measured after a while because you yeah <laughs> and it was an age thing isn't it it's like after a certain age get well my feet don't really need sort of, that sort of be the same for a long time now Right. Yeah, they, they certainly aren't growing much in the last 30 odd years. Certainly, well, exactly. Five, exactly. Five, Although mine did. Time. I went from a 12 to, I think I'm a 14 now. Oh, oh my that's God. That's the last 10 years. So there we go. Too much weight on my feet, splodging them out a bit. Right. So uh, one thing which absolutely just staggered me while whilst, whilst researching this was, and I, I'd never occurred to me that seeing Clark's was such a UK brand, and of course I don't collect Clark's shoes. I find it a bit strange collecting shoes, but uh, they never released them in the UK. It was a USA and Canada brand, so it was a uh, um, obviously done by Clark's International. But um, yeah, I, just, I I had a look through beyond the toys groups and stuff, and all I could find was, I mean, our good friend Craig Stevens. Um, he, he did exactly this. He was he was looking for any shoes that came out from Clark's in the UK. And he even went and contacted Clark's, and there was absolutely nothing. It, it, it's, I was, I was absolutely shocked. And something, you know, you learn something every day in this, in this collecting business. So, anyone else that think that, guys, do you know it was a USA stroke Canada brand, or was that a bit of a surprise to you as well? I was really surprised when I read your show notes with that. So much so I didn't believe you. I had to kind of have a look on the book. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, surprised me. I, I remember seeing the Clark shoes in um, one of Steve Sandsweet's early books. So, uh, again, I just assumed they would have been, because Clark's was such a well-known brand over here, I assumed they would have been here. But the first thing I want to kind of cover, and it's, it's kind of kind of strange. Now, um, this is a display banner uh, where Todd Chamberlain actually owns. He owns a lot of this stuff. This is what a lot, a lot of the stuff we talk about is from his personal collection. So he's obviously got a real thing for shoes. Now, this is the, the Clark's Sneakers display banner. And um, it's an absolutely fantastic bit of art. It's kind of Hildebrandt-looking thing. But there is something on that banner which is a little bit odd. Can anyone know what I'm aiming at there? There is, there's a figure on that banner which is like, oh, what, what are you doing there? It is sticks it, out of the sore thumb. The Tuscan Raider? The Tuscan Raider. I think, what the hell's he doing there? It's just like the, the normal graphic, you know, we we got our main kind of people, Luke, Lair, Darth. And then, oh, look, there's a Tuscan Raider. And I thought, wonder why that is. And, well, apparently it's because they made some Tuscan-flavoured shoes. So there we go. But what an odd thing to have on, on that poster. I don't think, I, I mean, I've gone through a lot of images on Google Images. And I cannot find any other version of the Tuscan Raider appearing on that particular poster. I mean, that is quite an oddity, isn't it? I, but I guess it, it must have been part of their, their branding then. That They actually said, right, you know, sandals, um, they call them flip-flops, thongs. Um, but they did actually feature some, some Tuscan Raider love. So, yeah, they must have thought, yeah, sort of sandy stuff, Tuscan Raiders. Or maybe, another theory might be that, yeah, again, early shots of the film, they thought that was a major character and they <laughs> stuck him in there and made shoes for him. But, yeah, any, any other theories there, guys? I mean, I found that very odd. It's probably just one of the few stock images that they had. 
maybe it wouldn't make sense for them to release a shoe, you know, uh, styled after the uh, Tuscan Radio, but not have it feature in any of the advertising. Yeah, it's. I just find it really, really strange. I mean, all the characters you could have chosen, all the robots and and uh, you know people fe- featuring the films, just to have you know to go for the Tuscan Radio. But again, thinking some of those, some of those early early thoughts of Star Wars, the pictures of Star Wars probably had him in. So they probably thought, yeah, it's the major guy. Let's let's get well, some shoes made of him. Didn't a similar thing well, happen with Clatter in Return of the Jedi, where for some random reason? everybody kind of picked up on him on the, in the early Return of the Jedi era because he was on quite a lot of photography. Uh, There's quite a lot of Clatu merchandise to start with because I think he was he was played by Lando's son or something, wasn't he? So I, th- I think um, people caught on to, to Clatu being a, a, a main character, even though when you saw the film, he wasn't. Yeah, I think it's a great shot. Right, so the first the first of the promotional items we'll come to is Space Pack Premium Punch-Out Space Helm and Cockpit. So this is something you, you picked up in the store when you bought your shoes. So I assume uh, whether it's you bought a couple of pairs of shoes, I can't find any details on exactly how you got this, but I assume it's just something they handed out in an envelope. So it was two big bits of cardboard all folded up, and it came in a big square white envelope with Star Wars on it. Stu, do you want to go over what the Clark's cockpit looks like and the play features in it? So the Clark's cockpit I'd, is kind of like... Um what is it uh, just just cardboard come flat cardboard did it yeah yeah it's just cardboard yeah you just fold it out and you folded it up and it's become like this amazing cockpit of millennium falcon millennium falcon yeah that's the word i was looking for rich oh. just couldn't couldn't quite think of it you've got a starry field you're looking out into into space you've got your little cockpit kind of area so your your console and you seem to have a little spinny disc with things on it and there's various things you, you i'm assuming you're punching this out or cutting it out and you're folding it into the cockpit so this is it's, it's quite a reasonable size as well it's not it's not small it's not small and it so, comes with a helmet again a foldable helmet who doesn't I mean, want a foldable helmet a foldable cardboard helmet with a passport attached to it so again you cut that out again i'd I've, I've love to find out what it what the instructions say so but yeah, it's, I mean, it's just the detail, the art involved in it. I mean, this this went to some major effort. It's, I mean, this was a proper promotional item to sell these shoes. But why would you have need to sell shoes? Shoes are so sellable. <laughs> they go on your footsies and uh, you walk around in them. So yeah, what what a promotional item. I mean, that is just, I would love to own that. Has anyone even seen one of these up close? No, I can't imagine there being too many around either because you're seeing cardboard, but... It wouldn't surprise me if it's, a, it's, a, it's the thinnest kind of cardboard you can get. It says in the description, punch out paper. Yeah, there won't be <laughs> too many of these around. They should do something like this again. That is just absolutely fantastic. But the foldable helmet details are amazing. I mean, it wouldn't have lasted five minutes, but crikey, I'd have those five minutes to remember forever. But it doesn't stop there, guys. Now this, uh, anyone fancy subscribing this one? This um, is this, again from Todd Chamberlain's collection, and this is, must be one of the most impressive looking in-house displays of all time. The Clark Shoe Styrofoam Dimensional Star Wars logo and sign, and there can't be too many of these around. This, this is probably in most of the stores, but I mean, we know what Styrofoam is like after a few years. It's going to uh, it's going to collapse. Anyone, anyone fancy describing this for everybody? It's Star Wars in a very very large font which I think the dimensions are seven and a half inches by 13 inches by 30 inches. So that's that's really big. And it's in form. And I believe there are three colours. There's the red Star Wars, um, a yellow one, and I think there's one blue. No, it's white. Yeah, so there's, there's the red, the yellow, and the white. So it's a really, it's so 70s, really, really 70s. It is. It is. Big piece of form that's been, you know, hollowed out and, and cut out to see Star Wars. Um, yeah, really nice. I mean, it's in, in with the brand. I mean, the branding on the box and stuff, which again we'll come to. Yeah. It's got this red Star Wars logo on a kind of a yellow background. So mm-hmm. it's, yeah, the branding is spot on there that it actually stands up. But also in, in that picture describing, there's also the, the, the kind of main artwork as well. Uh, the sign, the Clark's Shoes for Kids. The whole thing, it's, 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 they made some kind of new Star Wars scene. Just describe it then, Stuart. Just tell me what's going on in that scene. Oh, okay, so they're, they're, on, they're on some planet with like a massive rock face at the back with Vader and the Stormtrooper standing in front of the rock face. And you've got an R2 and 3PO to the left. The 3PO, I can't quite see it. It's quite small in this image, but 
it looks very um, Ralph McQuarrie 3PO rather than mm-hmm. yep. the 3PO we see on screen. And then at the front of the picture, you've got, um, I believe they're standing on a rock, but you can't quite see because Todd's got um, some red shoes positioned in front of him. But uh, Luke holding his lightsaber up, looking very masculine, shirt open, very like cargo trousers. But then this layer has got her boobs are so prominent <laughs> in the picture and a lot of thigh and a, a lot of leg. A lot um, of thigh. She's looking very, very, very sexy. Um, must admit, Luke's looking pretty sexy, but, you know, if, if you can see why the two of them hooked up, because they would have beautiful children. <laughs> Maybe with a few extra eyes, but yeah. But yeah, what, what a great image. It's the um, second best display that they did. Second best, interesting. Mm-hmm. What's the first? So it's a three-sided display with flashing lights on, and that, that has Luke... I'm guessing that's Leo in a yellow dress. Um, it definitely is. Cause it's the same image that's on the side of the, side of the Wellington boots. Yes. This display is actually in the Tomark guide. Um, it's got shoes in it, and the shoes are most bizarrely they wedge them in, sticking out. Yeah. So when when you see the shoes in <laughs> on this display, it looks it actually looks ridiculously bad. The display is better without the shoes in. So you see those kind of like those those little kind of like turn up pieces in there. Mm. That's where the, the, the base of the shoe kind of like gets shoved in. So they, they kind of stick out. And it looks so if you if you look in the coloured section of your Tomart guide, you'll see this with shoes in. And it's just like, oh, okay, that's that's a bit uh, awkward looking. I can imagine kids walking past that and just knocking the shoes out because they, they, they weren't done in pairs. <laughs> they were just shoved shoes in there to give you a give you a look at the range. I still prefer the star frame though, Rich, I've got to say. Mm, I don't. Because that star frame, imagine that anywhere in your collecting rooms or wherever. It, it would just look brilliant. But yeah, yeah, good call, Rich, like that. It is good. There is another display, well, there's a couple more displays, but it was, I could not find a picture anywhere. It was the Hoth Rebel Trooper display one. Did you find that? No, I looked everywhere for Manus. There's mentions of it in Rebel Scum, and I thought, right, somebody's going to have a photograph, and it led nowhere, and, and they were all pointing back to Todd Chamberlain. So, yeah. <laughs> I think he is. He is the king of this. Right, the third one on my on my list. This is okay. This is not bad, Rich. This has been your top ten. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> there's one for sale now. Do you know how that... much it's going for? Do you want to oh, buy it? Go, go on, go on. Right, we better describe it for okay, okay. listeners so that they know so, what it is. So, so this is the this is the Empire Strikes Back shoes sign. So, we will come to that. But um, it was Clark's mostly did a Star Wars range. Uh, they they did. It seemed that they did kind of like peer into Empire Strikes Back, but they didn't really take it on too much. Uh, but this is one of the kind of the Empire Strikes Back bits that they they came up with. A rare Empire Strikes Back one. A Luke on torn torn by a turret. Now, Rich, since you're frenzied on this one, you can describe this one. Well, it's a classic Hoth scene, isn't it? So you've got Luke on these torn, torn in the foreground. Uh, behind it, you've got the, the turret. And even further behind, you've got some Rebel commanders or Hoth soldiers in the distance here with the typical blue sky that they see on Hoth. Um, with the Star Wars Empire Strikes Back logo prominent across the top and shoes for kids written there. But you notice how it's set up, though. The the Luke on Tauntaun is kind of it's kind of like a drawn on sort of composite kind of image on a background of the movie scene. So they they made it really prominent. But again, no shoes there. No nope. <laughs> shoes yeah, for kids. I don't think this image quite works for me personally. It looks like he's you know he's knee deep in the snow on the Tauntaun. It's uh, yeah, just just a bit weird. Doesn't work. Luke's got shoes on because if he didn't have shoes on, he'd have got frostbite. It's strange that they didn't really kind of do a range of shoes. Um, you know, as, as we mentioned, the only Empire Strikes Back shoe with Empire Strikes on it was the Boba Fett one, and that was that was it really. They just went on the air. It was a packaging change, and uh, and then <laughs> that was it. And it kind of ended there. Right, Rich, come on then. How much? How much is that? Is that going for? Go on. Two. Should we all have a guess? Go on, Jason. How much will that go for? Your man of money. Uh, I'm going to say that fifteen hundred dollars. Ed, you wouldn't buy it, but how much do you reckon I'll go for? Uh, for what, the poster? Yeah. Uh, $250. Judging its rarity, judging that Richard's gone, you're <laughs> never going to guess how much this is. I think that's got to be up for two and a half, three grand. Yeah, I, that's what I was thinking. I think about, yeah, I'll, I'll say four grand. Well, Ed. Ed. You are nowhere near. It was $2,000. <laughs> is actually your fault at the moment. So if anybody wants that. 
Two thousand. Two grand. That's not bad, is it? I wonder if Todd's bought it yet. Oh no, he's already got one. He's already got one, yeah. Why do you want one? (laughs) I have two. We want two. Corner of the market. Exactly. Let's get into the shoes. That's what we want. We want to talk about. There were a number of shoes. Like I said, the the characters themselves, they've called them character dress shoes. I've not really heard that kind of term for a long, long time. My grandma used to use the word dress shoes, and I have no idea what she was talking about, but there we go. So they came in a various suede colours. They came in blue denim, brown and tan and blue leather, um, silver lame, which is rather nice, and you can probably guess who those shoes are aimed at. And they also had sandals and tennis shoes, and they represented... Princess Leia, C-3PO, Luke, Tuscan Raider, which was, um, like we said, a bit odd, R2, Darth Vader, Stormtrooper, and Chewbacca, a bit of a shame they weren't all furry. But then we also had a jet fighter, as they called it, which is obviously the X-Wing, we have covered in previous episodes, and what, what else do they have? This, that may be the only time that's been used. The Force. The Force. Jason, Ed, you might have a, a guess here. Anything else that's ever been represented the force in a product at all any idea um, I've, uh, only only um i think i've seen a fake custom mint on card of the force which was just <laughs> was also those a range of stickers i got a, i got a princess lear one a kind of like almost marvelly i don't know whether they were official stickers but i'm sure there was a full sticker i'm sure i sent a full sticker somewhere but yeah what a, what a range I mean, no Han. <laughs> Where's poor old Han? No Grand Moff Tarkin slippers. That's a bit of a bit of a missed one there. So, right, guys, rather than list all the shoes and go through every single shoe, I have asked you to pick a shoe you would like to own from the range. Stu, you're a man who could still wear these shoes. They're probably tiny. Which one interests you the most? I think you've already already pointed to it. I think oh. as a kid, I think I would have gone with the R2D2 shoes, the silver lane with black stripes. I kind of look at them like the the Adidas um, campus have kind of run with that look 30 years later. These are the Canada ones, I believe. They're from the Canada range. So on that Canada range, they actually had a slightly different packaging. That is, yeah, they look very much like bowling shoes. Well, yeah, but bowling shoes can be quite in if you wear them with the right trousers. <laughs> They kind of lacked a bit of imagination, really. I mean, they went for the silver thing, which is fine. There's no blue on there, which is also a bit of a shame. They, they're a little bit plain in my book for, for the, what, what the range yeah. had. I, I went through them, Pete, but, um, like, I, I, don't, I don't want this to sound bad, but the <laughs> the Luke Skywalker burgundy shoes, they remind me of, um, do you know those big shoes when someone's got club foot? Um, <laughs> and they wear those those really big, big shoes yeah, on yeah. one leg. That's what that reminds me of, and I don't, I'm, I'm not being detrimental on that, but, yeah, some of the sandals are quite nice if you're female, but um, all the all the boys' shoes are kind of that massive, massive sole on them. I will tell you what, the the, the Chewbacca blue denim, they're quite smart. They look quite nice with a with a coloured jean and nice shirt. Yeah, actually, yeah, them, Pete, them. Okay, I'm changing nice. my mind. Chewbacca. Chewbacca, okay. Okay, blue Richard, denim. you are the the most fashionable amongst us on the on the podcast with your wonderful tan lines what shoe would you have gone for right well can you remember the story about the hula boots that i told you about how you would <laughs> never have worn them right now to back us up on that one on stars home uk in feedback on an early episode scott cato had said that he'd actually wore a pair of roller boots and he went down his street and an older boy smacked him over the head with a pool cue and he never wore those roller boots again <laughs> and the exact same thing would have happened if anybody in the North East had worn Star Wars sandals, tennis shoes, lawn slippers, whatever you already call them. They're all absolutely hideous. I'm shocked by that, Rich. I'm shocked. But what, which ones would you have worn, though? <laughs> what are your favourites? You must have a favourite. You must have looked through these guys. You know he likes those blue and orange canvas X-Wing ones. No, they're absolutely hideous. I would have rather have sellotaped my feet and just went out and sellotaped. <laughs> oh my word Ed, you're, you're, you're a fashionable southern type um, some of these must have appealed to you somewhere maybe even a nice pair of ooh, solar racer style sandals 
I've got to say, I think I agree with Rich. They're all pretty hideous. It's. Um, I, I will say I love the boxes. The boxes are brilliant. They. Um, I really like the design on those. But the, the shoes themselves, yeah, I th- I, as Rich is, they're just a bit bland. They. They. Apart from, I think some of them, apart from on the sole, it doesn't even say Star Wars anywhere on the outside. So they just look like normal kind of uh, like these mi- like mid seventies shoes. They're, they're just a bit plain. Well, the uh, layer shoes, and I think the layer tennis shoe, and I. I think that's quite nice. I can see it. It's what a very the, bright, it's a very bright shoes? shoe. They're all right, yeah, yeah. Wouldn't, the tennis shoes, you've got a see-through PL on the bottom of one of them. They would look lovely with a pair of shorts and a, um, you know, a nice crew cup T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, could probably pull them off. Um, I, I quite like the um, Boba Fett ones. They're, they're, they're probably the ones I'd go for if I had to choose. When I was in high school, the, you know, the shoe of choice was uh, Dr. Martin's Airwear. And basically, the, the higher your boot was with the more holes, the more kudos you had. And if you turned up at school wearing a pair of these Star Wars special shoes, you'd be getting stomped on by uh, all the boys with the Doc Martens on. Looking at the shoes as, from a collecting point of view, I would say I would go for the the blue Dark Vader with the, the stitched helmet on them, just oh. because it looks like a Star Wars thing. Without that, it just looks like a special shoe. So I, I, I would probably pick that pair. What about you, uh, Pete? Well, well, there's the, you know what? It's in those tennis shoe areas a bit more exciting. Um, there are some, I mean, I have to say, because they look awfully goodly bad, I do like the, the Force ones, which are blue, because I like blue things. And they have May the Force Be With You on the on the side of your, your foot. And they actually have the Star Wars logo on them. And, of course, the tag that comes with them, because all these ones have tags, it has the Force tag on it, which is basically someone with a lightsaber. But, yeah, that's what I'd go for. But... It's interesting you all said that, actually. There, there was a theme that ran through this of, I wouldn't wear those, you've kind of paid me. My theory on why these shoes didn't come out in the UK is that we didn't have shoes like this. We didn't have coloured shoes, blue shoes, things with pictures on them. I mean, some of the, the ones for the youngsters, I think it's the C-3PO ones, I mean, they're red. They have a like a almost like a clown-like look to them. So they have a C-3PO on the, on the, on the toe. And they have all the characters sort of oddly drawn. Chewbacca looks nothing like Chewbacca. And in fact, some of the artwork is quite odd. And on the base of the shoe is full-size C-3PO looking a bit, again, a little bit odd artistically. But if you're a little tiny kid, you'd probably love them. And my theory is that we didn't have shoes like that in Britain. It was a market that would never have happened. So I'm wondering whether they, they looked at what they brought out of the States, their designs and the, and the, and the garish colours, and said that's not a market we could, we could sell in. Because I don't remember any shoes I had as a kid were anything other than either brown or black. And that was it. You know, they were, they were for purposes. Trainers were usually white, if you had them. Anyone else have a theory on that? Because I, I think that they just wouldn't have sold in the, in the UK. They just, people didn't wear stuff like that. And you've all pretty much said it, said the same thing, that people wouldn't have worn this stuff. You'd been beaten up or laughed at. I, th- I think the um, comparison to bowling shoes is quite accurate. That, that's, that's what they look like to me. But, I mean, that's quite a US thing, though, isn't it? That kind mm. of look. Um, sort of the converse look. I, I'd imagine they were they were looking at those kind of brands and trying to you know go down that sort of line and try to be trendy. I mean, the Princess Leia tennis shoe is very very kind of bowling shoe. Uh, very, it's quite a nice one actually. It's quite a nice thing, but it just says the word princess on it. So um, obviously going for the the lady market, unless you have very thin feet. I'd wear them. Well, yeah, I'd probably wear them now if I could fit them in, but I don't think they did size 14s back in those days. Any other theories on why they, they did not do a UK release with these shoes? Aside from maybe they just didn't get the license, it just seemed to be a, a big miss there. Is it the NSPCC Cruelty to Children Act? That's, that's not a bad shout, Jason. Have a look at the Darth Vader Lives dress shoes. They are quite hard looking. <laughs> They're black with a kind of like a Star Wars band on the on the on the lace, kind of like a little cover, and they've got a very sinister looking black Darth Vader on the side of the shoe, so they look a bit better. But still garish. Ed, you mentioned the Empire Strikes Back shoes. That seemed to be the only proper Empire Strikes Back thing that they did. And they just changed the packaging. So that packaging kind of they just shoved shoved those shoes in again into that packaging. So and it looks like they didn't until Return of the Jedi, they didn't actually keep the license. Uh, Stride Right took the license on Return of the Jedi. But again, Stu, I think you've had a look at Stride Right stuff in the past. I don't think there's any anything on there with Return of the Jedi on, on it. Is it? It's just Star Wars, but Stride Right. <laughs> I know my bag. I bought a carrier bag, and that just has Star Wars on it. It doesn't actually mention Return of the Jedi. I know you're right. 
it's interesting that that that, that there was may, maybe it was too you know for again a sh- to to sell shoes you've got to be as wide ranging as possible you can't be too I mean these days it's different because you've got manufacturing uh, process of change but back then I don't think you could you could have gone too specific with shoes you have to keep them as general as possible and just having you know releasing a Star Wars shoe for Return of the Jedi you know you you probably couldn't have got away with having Return of the Jedi on the side of it. Uh, I know, I know there have been things like we, we've seen the roller shoe, we've seen the the ice skate have returned to but I can't think of anything shoe wise with it on. It just it just continued the Star Wars range. But yeah, and in fact, looking at shoes in general, the only Empire logo I could find was on that one Boba Fett shoe, and apart from that, that was it. I've not seen, I cannot find any. So I need a real shoe expert <laughs> to to write wrong. I'm sure as we do other licenses o- over the over the months and years we might do, we'll do other shoe companies and see what they came up with but if you just if you if you search them it's very hard to find any other than a star wars logo on a shoe so i'll put it out there i put it out there anyone knows let me know because uh my theory is that they, they, they didn't they didn't go down that route what are ewok shoes i think they're very ewoky to walk in no nah, it didn't go well did it <laughs> well, I think well, they're very well. easy to ewok in that's better <laughs> Oh, that's going to be easily the worst joke of the podcast so far today. That's 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 pretty bad. That's I, pretty bad. I, I doubt that. Yes, I doubt that. Look, look at that range of shoes though, and those characters. What, what do you reckon could have been a good shoe for a character? I said there was no hand shoe in there. I mean, we we could have had the Tarkin slippers. What 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 would have been a Han Solo shoe? What could have been on it? Uh, it might have been black and white, wouldn't they? Maybe a yeah. blaster down the side. Suede. Yeah, of course. Did and it? a ha- and a hairy chewy. Chewy one as well, a bit like well, a Ugg boot. <laughs> Actually, uh, well, they have done those recently, haven't they? They've done like Ugg boot Chewbacca things. I don't know how official they were Ugg boots, but they they've definitely done a furry a furry boot. Walrus so, man flippers for swimming. I mean, there, see now you start to think. <laughs> Burrito disco boots for that special <laughs> night out. Yeah, you see, I think they missed a few tricks there. You know, they went went down some these very safe looking shoes, you know, with a little picture on. They could have really gone to town on some of these things, you know. We could have had, like, torn, torn feet, wumper feet, all this sort of stuff. It have been brilliant. In fact, they have done that. There we go. So, yeah, that's, um, that Empire Strikes Back logo on the on the, the Boba Fett shoes um, is actually striking. I mean, I mean, the shoes, actually, the Boba Fett shoes, I think Ed, Ed mentioned them before, I, I mean, they are much more of a modern-looking kind of, you know, sports trainer. They've got a rather, a rather uninspiring uh, Boba Fett logo, kind of like... <laughs> oddly stuck on the side doesn't he look like it's it's straight um and they're not even in boba fett colors either they're just you know blue red gray i don't remember too much of that on boba fett's armor it's no green or anything and the box now i've not actually seen I've, 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 anyone seen one of those boxes i've seen the star wars box loads but i've not seen the empire strikes back box because it, it's the logo the little bit anemic dare i say it I mean, it, it's not that kind of real chunky, wonderful-looking Empire Strikes Back. They, they've almost coloured it in too much, and there's too much going on with it. But it is a box I like. I do like that box. I wouldn't mind seeing that up close, or even owning one one day. Packaging, packaging, packaging. Now, we've talked about the shoe boxes, and there are differences between the Canadian and US boxes. We kind of touched on it. Anyone want to just go over what the actual differences are? My local language on the Canadian... Yep. What else, Stu? There is a big difference on the two Alas, They haven't got the um, yellow background around the Star Wars. So the Star Wars is red, isn't it, on the um, American boxes? But it's also a printed kind of star field as well. It's quite a plain um, base to the box. It's uh, just blue, I believe, with uh, yeah. the Guerre de Trois and uh, some of the French stuff. Like, I'm not even going to pronounce that. We'll destroy it. But yeah, um, again, again, the design, design of the box isn't the best it's but again i wonder why they t- what, what decision was made there to have that on where you've got this wonderful kind of detailed star field and you know um action scene almost you've got um if you, if you look at the box flats you've got your know, darth vader luke skywalker princess leia again looking saucy and she then is, the- isn't she with that hand on that hip yeah really pushing a bust out and luke's got a bit of nipple out in this one yeah he's, he's showing some man chest you oh, know that, they are a good looking siblings and, and, of course, darth has got the, that little glint in his eye on this one. Did they know more than they were letting on? It's like, oh, hello. 
or maybe it was eyeing up Princess Leia's breasts. I don't know. You just don't know what's happening in their minds. But yeah, the interesting Death Star, kind of like a little little tiny kind of dish on there on the star. Not quite as big as it should be, but there we go. And we've got uh, um, X-Men fighters and TIE fighters not engaging in battle, but just kind of flying towards each other. So they obviously didn't know there was any fighting scenes going on. But yeah, there's there's a real real difference in the in the two boxes. The the fact that you've got this Canadian box, which it's almost like, well, Canadians aren't interested in fun stuff, so we'll just give them this really plain-looking box. I, I, it's a real mistrip there, I think. I wonder if, what if they did actually um, interchange those boxes at any stage, but yeah. Again, again, the Canadian ones I've not seen. I've seen the Star Wars boxes. They just haven't been out there. Right, other packaging. Now, I talked about the tags. So each shoe came with a tag um, attached to it, and some really nice ones in there. So those are actually quite collectible as well. They, they do actually go for reasonable money. I saw one went for about fifty, about fifty dollars, I think, and it, it was quite crumpled up. I think it was a, a Luke Skywalker one and a Force one. Very, um, very nice. But again, quite collectible. There's actually a plastic bag. Now the plastic bag actually gave you a rather uninspiring view of the collection. But well, why am I saying uninspiring? What's going on there? Well, yeah, you can't even see any design on the shoes, can you? They just like brown brown black blue blue white yeah it's not got the whole range on there you've got the the hildebrand picture again again with the tuscan raider you just just make him out so they really they really went for that tuscan raider design they really did like him i mean he was he is prominent on there you know a brown tuscan raider shoe be like a tuscan raider um again he's you know part of the main cast um but again no chewbacca on there which is interesting they went right chewbacca main character not interested in him tuscan raider is our guy how easy are these things to pick up now, these these shoes? Anyone had a look on eBay? Yeah, I'd look, I'd look on eBay, and I mean, I can't find any in, in the UK. It's all the United States stuff. Um, and just to kind of tie up the Clarks thing, they did actually re- well, they did actually get back involved in Star Wars recently. And, um, yeah, they, they did a special uh, female-centric range of Ray shoes, and there was, like, I think there was six in the range. And that coincided with the last Jedi film, so I don't know how they sold. But yeah, that was it. They they, they must just just got a, a brief license for one character, which they did. So because I mean, there's there's various other companies out there that we've seen heavily advertised things like uh, Posu shoes as well. That they've that uh, yeah, there's thousands and thousands of other uh, other companies doing shoes and footwear. So yeah, the the legacy is there. So okay, guys. I mean, I I hope we've covered enough there. It's hard not to just like list. Oh, it was they did this shoe, and then they did this shoe, and they did this shoe. There's a nice little range. I would suggest anyone go and have a look, especially the UK people go and have a look. Um, the final question I want to ask was: Now, I'm I'm always a bit odd about shoes. I wouldn't I wouldn't want a pair of shoes in my collection, uh, especially used shoes. Does anyone own used? clothing in their collection at all uh no i'd be the same so, so i'll own up here i do actually collect shoes myself i collect kind of 80s and 90s mainly nike trainers but all i'm worn all new I, I definitely wouldn't want to collect uh old worn shoes and that's what i didn't know about you ed so so your shoe collection <laughs> I, I keep seeing this like they appeal buy these famous like nike shoes and stuff i mean do they kind of like hold their value i mean I, it, it just seems odd to collect there's an interesting thing about them is that they fall apart after time so they're they're, they're all made of this um foam material that just disintegrates it's a bit like the foam in the dagobah play set or something so you, you'll see like that the first release of, of certain trainers can be very valuable even though they look like they're falling to pieces just because there's nothing you can do about it that's just what happens to them after time but yeah there's a massive market for uh, for collectible uh, trainers and or sneakers as they call them in america yeah, sneakers. Anyone know what they're called sneakers for? Just out of interest. No idea. It's quite obvious, really, because they're made of like a very good rubber sole. It was easy to sort of sneak up on people, so people they, they, they got the reputation of being sneakers. And that's where the word came. That's just where it came from. I think they were used in various things like army base and stuff. You know, these got sort of shoes to run around in, and yeah, and that's the, that's the reputation of the shoe was the fact that you couldn't hear them. Makes sense. That obvious, Ed. That obvious. <laughs> What about you, uh, Jason? I reckon you've got some stinky old shoes in your collection somewhere. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the closest thing I would come to would be uh, I've got um, Star Wars Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi second-hand curtains. But that's, that's about as far as I go in cloth-type collectibles, I think. Yeah, never, ever buy curtains from Stu, OK? Just, just giving you a warning, because he tends to do things with curtains. 
Do you want to buy some, Jace? I've got some. They're still in the packet. Have you? Oh, yeah. The Jedi I'll, ones. I'll, I'll have to get my UV light out and just see if there's any uh, spotters on them. <laughs> They've never been out, Jace. They've never been out. That's what he tells you. That's what he tells you. I'm not even going to ask Rich because there's no way he's got shoes in his clothes. There's just no way. No way. <laughs> oh, I don't know. He does come out some random things. Just, I just can't see it. I mean, out of those shoes, I just, I don't know. I, even if they were brand new, I'd be a little bit weird towards them. But I do like the boxes, though. I would like to have one of those Star Wars boxes. Or, no, actually, Empire Strikes Back one. They are really nice. You know, they do look very sort of 70s, 80s. If anyone out there has got information, you, go, you know what? You've missed out tons of this stuff. Or you've got something in your collection. Or you can collect the shoes. Just let us know what your favourite piece is. I would like to know. As far as I know, they didn't come out in the UK, but they came out anywhere else. Or you picked up a pair somewhere. You go, you know what? It did come out in some completely random territory. Someone bought a bunch of boxes. And let us know. I'd love to know if they uh, appeared anywhere else. But, yeah, I hope we've done that justice. If not, we'll do it better next time. And uh, thank you very much. Goodbye.